Hello again. This is part two to the pH and pOH calculation video. Um, this is going to introduce to you or reintroduce to you the pH scale um, that arbitrarily goes from 0 to 14. Um, in Chem 12, you are going to be able or you are going to need to be able to think in terms of pH and make a relationship to the amount of H3O plus ions in solution. You are going to need to think in terms of pOH and again make a relationship to the amount of OH minus ions in solution. I'd like to show you that if you can count from 0 to 14, like I know you all can, then you will be able to make those difficult uh, relationships in your head or doodling a little bit and then you can figure it out. Um, all of these questions will be sort of mid-level multiple choice and you'll see some tricky written response that we'll be practicing in class on our whiteboards. But let's just start with the most basic thing. You have seen the pH scale in your classes before pH scale starts from 0 and goes to 14. If you have a pH of 7, then at 25 degrees, you will be considered neutral. You should have equal parts acid, equal parts base, and they saw off, you'll end up with a pH of 7. If the pH is less than 7, you will have an acidic solution. The pH dropping from 7 to 6, to 5, to 4, to 3, to 2, to 1. Every whole number decrease is 10 times more H3O+. When the pH goes down, the amount of acid increases. When you have a pH of 0 or 1 or 2, you are considered to be in the strong acid range. If you have a pH of say 4, 5, 6, you are in the weak acid range. I try to avoid pHs of 3 for reasons that if you have a very dilute strong acid, it's possible to get a pH of 3. Or, if you have a very concentrated, weak acid, then it's possible to get a pH of 3. So I like to recommend to students that when you're in multiple choice and you're trying to define and give characteristics of strong acids, stick to 0, 1, maybe 2. And when you're defining and giving characteristics of weak acids, stick to 4, 5, and 6. The same goes with weak bases. Weak bases will have more OH minus, less H3O plus, and the pH will increase, 8, 9, 10. It's a good range for a weak base. Try to ignore 11 for reasons like I ignore 3. And then 12, 13, 14 is a high pH, very low amount of H3O plus, and that's a good range for a strong base. Remember that the pH and pOH are 14 minus. So if you can count from 0 to 14, then you should be able to count from 14 to 0. I recommend never thinking in terms of pOH. And whenever your teacher gives you data in the form of pOH, 14 minus it, and then go back to think in terms of pH. Remember that pH is simply 10 to the negative for the H3O plus. So if you have a pH of 3, you have a 10 to the negative 3 concentration of H3O. If you have a pH of 10, then you have a 10 to the negative 10 concentration of H3O. That number is decreasing because the solution is becoming more basic. So if you have to think in terms of OH,
think pOH, 14 minus it to get pH, and now you're right back to the scale from 0 to 14. Years ago in class, I forget who did it, it wasn't me, some student, I forget who it was, but I'm going to take full credit for it, came up with this little green box pattern down here, and I love it. I recommend you write this on the top of every acid-base test and quiz to understand these ranges. This simply means if you have a pH, you count from 0 to 14, and you go from acid to base. That's what you know that you've done ever since elementary school. If you uh, are thinking in terms of pOH, well, you got to go from 14 to 0, and it still is acid to base. So this will really help you figure out the relationship between pH and pOH and acids and bases. Okay? In class, what I plan on doing is giving you a list of compounds. Acids, bases that are strong and weak, and some will be spectators or salts. And you are going to have to put them in order from most basic to least basic, from lowest pH to highest pH. They're actually quite complicated, but you have to go back, convert everything into pH, and then just put them in order however the question wants. And we're going to do enough of these that it's going to make sense, uh, but that'll be in class. You will have some pretty tricky questions. Um, back when there were provincial exams, we really studied this. I downplay it now for sure. I'm not even sure how often this comes up in first year university, but there will be times when the temperature is changed. And when the temperature is changed, KW will change. We know that from a few lessons ago. So pause this part right here in the video. Give this a quick, quick read. This is kind of interesting. If you increase the temperature, the equilibrium in water will shift right. You'll make more products, more ions, and KW will increase. You can see that in the top, 9.5. It used to be 1.0. So if you negative log that number to get pKW, you'll notice that it does not equal 14 anymore. Where in the previous video, KW is 14 at 25 degrees. Sorry, pKW is 14 at 25 degrees. So when pH and pOH used to add to 14, now pH and pOH are going to add to 13. And you're probably thinking, well, that's really no big deal. But halfway in that scale used to be 7, but now halfway up that scale is 6.5. So at a higher temperature, the pH of 7 does not mean neutral. Neutral, remember, is always equal amounts acid and base. But here, when you have equal amounts acid and base, that scale goes to 13. So the pH of neutral hot water is 6.5. You jump into a cold Skaha Lake, it's opposite. That pH might be 7.5 or 8, because when it's really cold, equilibrium shifts left, KW gets smaller, negative log of a smaller number is a bigger number, and we're going to do that one in class. So this is definitely a high-end, multiple-choice thought question, but this used to be a pretty popular thing on provincial exams. We'll practice it as more multiple-choice in class. Just remember that the pH of 7 is neutral only at 25 degrees, and because temperature is the only thing that can change a KW value. This one's kind of interesting. We will see you in class tomorrow.